everybody, welcome to the shop. Today it is a miserable rainy afternoon here in Central Florida. It's just been dumping on us. The good news is that I'm here in the shop and I'm not out there. The even better news, the special delivery I got from my friends at Lincoln Electric. They sent me a Square Wave TIG 200. Now, before you get excited, I don't get to keep this machine. They were kind enough to send it to me after I got lots of emails from my YouTube subscribers asking me what I thought about this machine. And how can I honestly give you an answer about it if I've never touched one? So they were very nice and sent me a machine to borrow for a couple of weeks, try out, and let you know what I thought about it. This machine is groundbreaking for Lincoln in a lot of ways. One, it's an asymmetric TIG welder. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you don't know what that means, let me just say that's a more advanced form of TIG welder that can do some more advanced functions, especially when you're welding magnesium or aluminum. An asymmetric TIG welder started off around $3,500 and went all the way up to over 10,000 or more. This complete machine, plug and play, ready to go, is a little below $1,400 retail. I wanna open it up and go through it, let you see what's inside it, turn the machine on and, and go through all the functions and let's weld some stuff with it and let you know what I think about it. All right, well the first thing I see, packed right on top of the power cables. There's two power cables, 110 volt and a 230 volt. This machine will run either 110 or 230 volt. And the nice thing about that feature is if you need to do a repair where there's not 230 volts available, you can plug this into 110 and still weld with it. This is a 17 size torch and it comes already with a torch torch liner on it. That's a very nice feature. Uh, machines in the past have not had that. This is the uh, gas hose for the argon gas. Regulator. The foot amp roll. Uh, if you're not familiar with a TIG welder or how a TIG welder works, um, we can control the heat typically with a foot pedal. Think of it like an accelerator in a car. The harder we push on the pedal, the faster the car goes. Same thing holds true in TIG welding. The further we push the pedal down with our foot, the more heat and or the faster we can weld. This machine comes with an electrode holder, also called a stinger. Why, you ask, why does it come with a stinger? Here's a basic fundamental of, of a TIG welder. A TIG welder is what's called a constant current machine, meaning that wherever we tell it we want the current to be by our foot most of the time, it will deliver that same amount of current consistently until we tell it to stop by lifting our foot. On the old stick welder that many of you have used in your farm or around the home, you set that dial on the front of it to whatever you want that current output to be, you strike the arc and start welding. That machine will continue to give you that amount of current until you break the arc. So a TIG welder is a constant current machine and a stick welder is a constant current machine. That means you get two welders in one package. And that was a long way of me telling you, yes, it's a stick welder too. Goes to the ground clamp. Comes with a, uh, a quick reference guide. We'll set that aside. I'll look through that later. Drum roll, please. Enter one square wave tick 200. between 25 and 30 pounds. A 200 amp welder, 25 to 30 pounds. That's pretty impressive, especially for the price. Let's tear into it, get some stuff hooked up and see how this thing runs. I took a quick minute uh, while the camera was turned off to look through the instructions. And let me say this much about the instructions. They couldn't be easier to read or more simple. This machine is very user friendly. Now, for the sake of setup, and maybe even for doing some testing, I'm gonna run this machine on 110. So I have a dedicated 20 amp drop that's the only circuit on there and it's got its own breaker over there in the breaker panel. We're gonna choose the 110 volt plug. Plugs in the back, quarter turn. Plug it into the 110 volt outlet. I'm going to try to do some TIG welding with this machine. 
So for TIG welding, we're going to hook the ground cable to the positive. And because all TIG welding in DC is done with electrode negative, we're going to hook the TIG welder or the TIG torch up to the negative output. While we're here, remember that uh, foot control? Foot control hooks up really easy. And that's it. What I do want to do is go over the front panel on this machine. We power it up. It'll go through its own startup sequence. And this machine is set up so simple that right here gives us our adjustments, and right here it gives us what we're gonna weld. Notice right here it's lit up next to AC TIG. If I push this button, it goes to DC TIG. If I push the button again, it goes to stick welding. It's that easy. We go to AC TIG, we have a couple of features we can choose. The first A is lit up, is a capital A, that stands for amperage. As you adjust this knob, you'll adjust your maximum amperage output of the machine. That's going to be based on what you're welding, the thickness of what you're welding. Push it again, it has a pulser. So the pulser is off if we wanted to change the pulser time, how often it pulses. It lets you manually pulse like a metronome, the out weld output current. It's real helpful when you're a beginner or you're welding really, really, really thin material. The next thing is the AC balance. Now, I'll explain to you a little bit about AC balance. We would like in the perfect world to be able to control more penetration and more cleaning and all the other things that happen in the AC sine wave when we're welding. Well, it's not a perfect world. However, we can change where that AC waveform spends more of its time, more positive or more negative. Now, if that doesn't make sense for you and you don't know anything about TIG welding, that's cool, I understand. Just understand that when you spend a little more time in the negative, you get a little bit more work done or a little bit more heat into your plate that you're welding. That makes the machine a little more efficient and allows you to weld thicker materials with actually less weld current. We can adjust this all the way up or down. The next button is frequency. You can set this machine all the way from 60 hertz, which is what we have in our wall current, all the way up to 150 hertz. Now, from experience, I'm gonna tell you that I always like somewhere around 120 hertz. I have literally been through every function of this machine, every basic function of this machine, right now. It's done, that's all there is to it. So I'm gonna get an argon bottle and get it hooked up here at the back. On the back side of the machine, here's the plug I showed you. Just unplugs like that, plug it right back in in a quarter turn, right? Simple enough. Change it out from a 110 volt or a 230 volt plug. The gas line hooks right here. Get it snugged up. It's just gonna go to our ergon bottle. And that's it. That's all there is to hooking it up. Just in case nobody's ever put a TIG torch together or they're just kind of curious how it how one works. I'm gonna put this one together real quick for you. Um, this is a 17 torch, it's an air cool torch, meaning it's not cooled by air actually, it's cooled by the welding argon that comes through the hose, circulates through the head, and cools all the copper components before it comes out and becomes your shielding gas. They call it air cooled because argon is present in the air and it's, I guess it's a whole lot cooler to say here. This part right here, this is called a collet body. This screws right into the front of the TIG torch like so. Notice the holes in it? There's holes all the way around this. That's where your welding gas comes out of to shield your weld. And this part right here is your ceramic cup. When the welding gas comes out, it fills up inside the cup and comes out the front. It screws on like that. This is your collet. If you're a machinist, you know exactly what a collet is. It's exactly the same thing. The collet grabs the tungsten. This is a 332 collet and a 332 purple E3 tungsten. I've already ground it. It was in the back of the torch. And then we put this part called the back cap on. When we loosen the back cap, we loosen the collet. That allows us to move the tungsten in or out and set the proper stick out. Once we get it where we want it, we tighten the back cap and it can't move. It's that simple. Torch is set up. We're gonna 
weld some aluminum, so I'm gonna set the machine on AC TIG. I like it to be about 75% unbalanced, that's my preference. And I like to weld about 120 hertz. My maximum current, I'm gonna go 115 amps. What we got here is uh, just some welding coupons that I had left over from the last time I, I taught a welding class. Probably 5052 grade aluminum. It's uh, 11 gauge, pretty thin. I'm just gonna run a flat bead across it just to see how the machine runs and get a feel for it. One trick, I've talked about this in one of my other videos before, if you're, if you're not making a real long weld, is to take this long welding rod that gets kind of wiggly out there on the end, take it and cut it in half. It's a much more manageable piece to weld. Take our stainless steel water brush, clean all the dirt off this. Excited, man, let's run a bead. of the art, very tight control, very responsive to the foot pedal. When you step down on the pedal for more heat, the heat is instant, it's right there. That's very impressive out of a small welder. I'm gonna run another. I really like that. Now we're going to switch from welding some aluminum with this Square Wave 200 to welding some stainless. The first thing we need to do is switch from AC to DC. Here's how you do it. Difficult, right? I love this machine so far. We're going to weld some stainless steel coupons. We're going to use 309 as the filler metal. Once again, it's just something I have a few extra pieces laying around here at the shop. Cleaned up the tungsten, resharpened it. What I want to do is just run a flat bead across. I'm looking to see how the arc starts and establishes, how well it flows at low current because DC can get squirrely at low current if the machine's not a real tight machine. And then we're just gonna run a bead all the way across the metal. started the arc, I backed the amperage down, and it's the arc started instantly. Very nice, clean, brisk arc start. No sputtering, no arc wandering. I came on, got the heat right, and started running a bead, and it held a nice, clean, consistent arc all the way down. I am super impressed. Nice little tight TIG weld. I can't say enough about this little TIG machine. It's a dual voltage machine. It's an asymmetric TIG welder, has the stick welding capabilities, and with a three year warranty, that's a lot of machine for under $1,400. Be sure to check out our next video and we'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.